We're now joined by Innocent Chukuma, the Regional Director for the Foundation West African Region. Thank you very much for joining thank, us. Thank you for having me. What, what is your take on this year's celebration, especially um, in light of the pandemic that we have? One is remarkable uh, because this was a, a long awaited event since 1999. I mean, all those that were elected from 1999 till now rode on the back of June 12th. And to think of that, uh, of the fact that it took 21 years uh, for the government to recognize that is certainly a kudos to uh, President uh, Buhari and his uh, government. Uh, he appeared to have a triumph where others uh, perhaps shied away from, from history, including uh, President Obasanjo, who was a direct beneficiary of the 1999 election. Uh, so would you say it is a landmark for this administration, the declaration of uh, June 12th as Democracy Day in Nigeria? I would say it's a symbolic victory. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as a landmark because it's just a day to mark. Uh, if you look at the essence of June 12th, beyond the symbolism of remark, it was the first time Nigerians voted without bothering about religion, without bothering about uh, ethnicity. Abiola won even, uh, I, I give you an example of myself. I come from Ahia Zumbise local government area in Imo State. The running mate of Abiola's opponent, Dr. Sylvester Ugo, was from my local government. Abiola won in that local government. It shows you his acceptance and the significance of that era, which looking at this past 21 years and what could have been if that election in 1993 was allowed uh, to hold, uh, you begin to see that we have, um, we have not made as much progress. And it was also the first election I monitored as a civil rights activist. Well, how, where did we lose it then? Because if we were able to, beyond our ethnicity, our religious inclinations, we're able to come out, like you said, to consensuously um, pick a leader that we trust will deliver on his mandate. And then 20 something years down the line, we're still grappling with this issue. We're still plagued with the issue of ethnicity? Well, I would say it's the evils of military rule. Uh, because um, when Babangida's government annulled that uh, election, it tries to manufacture reasons why um, it could not allow the, uh, the election to hold. And even the government that took over from uh, uh, IBB's government, that is General Sani Abacha, uh, was the one that uh, a lot of young people today may not know that it was under Abacha's government that Nigeria was divided uh, into these symbolic uh, six zones. So uh, Biol, uh, Bacha was the one that said, oh, all those who were protesting against June 12th were localized in the southwest, that the rest of Nigerians were moving on. And that was how this whole, uh, if you like, zonalization of politics in Nigeria began. You know, if something is happening in this zone, the other parts of the country will be going on. Just like now, when you tell people that we're actually actively in civil war, they say, oh, it's something that is happening uh, in Northeast. We are Borono and all of that. And they sow divisions. Uh, this might Nigeria. seem naive, but we have a lot of smart people mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. Why do we continue to allow ourselves to be governed by people who have a history of not performing, of not, you know, living up to expectation to continue to lead us. I think uh, D.K. Chuku Merije, uh, the spoken word artist, actually put his fingers on what caused that. Uh, in this is a poem, the, um, the Road and the Bridge, where he talked about, if you look at in social relations, that's intermarriages, relationships, we're in the 21st century. In economic affairs, we're in the 21st century. Because if you're looking for a partner to start a business, you look for the smartest, whatever they come. But when it comes to politics, we're not just in the 20th century. I would actually say we're in the 19th century. And what is responsible for that is just simple provisions in our constitutions, which has become um, the laws of the land. That is your state of origin. If you want to contest, now I've been living in Lagos now for almost 30 years. I came to this uh, state as a graduate in 1990, 1991 uh, section. I've lived here for 30 years. But if I want to serve people I live with, I would be asked. 
state of origin. So and I have to go back to a place where I am only a tourist. I come from Imo State, but I'm only a tourist in Imo. I go there during festivities, whether it's Easter, holidays, Christmas, holidays. That's when I go there. After a week, I'm back to Lagos. But I cannot contest here. And if you remember that actually in the first republic, people contested across the country. The first mayor of Enugu, Alwaji Motunu, was, from a, was a, a full animal from, from Northwest. And in this Lagos, people from across the country, you know, had represented uh, wherever they, they, they live. So how, how can we begin to retrace our steps? Because that's what we, we hope. That, that that's why I call this symbolism. We still need to do the substance of June 12, which is can somebody in today's Nigeria be able to stand for election and represent people regardless of uh, his state of origin? So it begins with actually constitutional and legal amendment, and also the, the most important one, the mindset amendment. You know, that in our neighborhood, we know smart people whom, if given positions of authority, would deliver, but when it comes for election, we vote out of fear. We don't vote out of hope. You know, we, we need vote to take who that would... out, basically. <laughs> yes. Definitely. I wish we, and this conversation is really something we should continue subsequently. But for now, we have to uh, stop. Thank you very much for Thanks coming so to our studio. Thanks a lot for having and me. And happy Democracy Day to you. Same to you. <laughs>